One, two. That was Planks to Yoen, um, arranged by Mickey Murphy for the Grade 3 RGT 2020 acoustic guitar syllabus. Um, things to watch out for here. So this is obviously a, a, a plectrum style piece. Um, you've got this dotted quaver to semi-quaver rhythm. This dum dun dun da dun da dun da 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 dun da 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 um, I pretty much throughout, I think every single one of those fast rhythms, I'm playing up down. Um, I I don't think there's much of a problem with anywhere else doing whatever you want. Like I kind of do a mixture of on on straight quavers or crotchets downs, sometimes ups. Uh, let's take the first bar for example. I think I go down down up down. Up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 down. It doesn't matter. Like the this idea of uh, doing alternating. Maybe you've heard that you you must always go down and up, and that's not the case with this piece. Um, many pieces it is the case, but not this piece. We as long as we're keeping beat one on a downstroke, I think down. And beat three, uh, beat four. So down, 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 down. It doesn't matter about um, what I'm saying. Basically, beat three can be an up or a down. It doesn't really matter, um, in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, but the downs on, on beat one and four are really important because they drive the music forward. And this really is uh, a piece that needs this rhythmic drive. Ba, 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 ba. Um, I think I played it quite politely in that performance. You could even dig in more. Um, you're going to have to practice, um, probably to get this piece really, really sounding good, you've got to practice the dotted rhythms. Um, you could even take, say that in the first bar over the C chord, you've got... Down, up, down, down, up, down. Now take that at um, a nice leisurely speed, but one where you're not missing or scraping any of those notes. You know, a lot of the time that that second note might not come out well. There'll be that kind of thing. We really want to hear clear articulation there. I, I do believe that the, that practicing that slow enough so that you're, you you can really hear each note crystal clear um, is is really important. So you could I, I'd recommend going down, up, down, and then pause. Try it again. Even just going up, down. You could isolate that in your right hand. That's good to do. Uh, big thing to note, um, anchor your hand on the guitar somehow for this. Um, 
there are some styles of guitar where you can play melodies like this and have a floating hand. It's, it's harder. Um, I wouldn't do it. I, I prefer wrist on the bridge. You can do a finger or two on the, on the wood. Um, I prefer this. What, what I like about the, the wrist on the bridge for isolating um, the movement in the hand is that we, we, we're, we're using the wrist here to, to really play fast. And it's, you just can't get that speed or accuracy when your hand is floating in the air. It's very hard to locate the strings. Um, if you watch any gypsy jazz guitarist, they're masters of playing with a floating hand and it's incredible to watch. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say for this, root your hand on the guitar somehow. Isolate those hard, fast rhythms. Always do them up down. You get a weird uh, stress and accent if you if you do them down up. It doesn't feel natural to me uh, at all. Um, anything else to say in this piece? Uh, I think in the, in the, in the second page, um, be careful how you're going to get up to the seventh fret in the first line. So this is from bar 17. I use second finger on this G. And I think I slide. Um, you've got a choice. You want to end up on fifth fret with your first finger. But you can end up on any of those fifth fret notes with your first finger. So you could slide with your second finger and then replace. It's quite a nice thing to do occasionally. The reason why I want to end up with the first finger on the fifth fret is so that you can then jump your third and the second finger to the seventh. So you definitely want to end up, end of bar 18, with first finger, third, second, and then third there. Um, make full use of the open E string in bar 20. That's your chance, the first open E string, that's your chance to get down to third fret. So, and practice that motion of plucking the open E string and simultaneously moving down. You can even eye up third fret as you're playing so that you, you're as sure to hit it. Hit, to hit it. Uh, another interesting thing in that bar is that that first dotted rhythm, the fast rhythm, we're playing up down across strings in a kind of in, in the wrong direction, you might say, like up on the second string, which is taking us away from the first string. I would still do that up down. I I, I always think um, the more and more I play Petrum style guitar that. The, the most important thing is, uh, with especially with folk music, is downstrokes on downbeats. Um, so get used to it. That's a that's a great exercise too. Um, I, I drill a lot of my students on playing patterns that aren't economic. So there's economic picking, you know, travelling in the direction of the next string. Easy, lovely. But it's really, really good for your progression later on. You've got to do the opposite. And doing kind of rolls like... Oh, I'm not very good at that. Doing straight alternation. That's a whole other kind of... Um, a whole other thing there. But um, yeah, basically, get used to that. Um, hope that helps. Thanks.